just wanted to intro us today. Uh, uh, our own Dr. Michael Broom is going to talk to us. He he is a PhD. He has a PhD in psychology. He's going to talk to us about some coping, some the stress that we're dealing with right now. Um, us as we as entrepreneurs, a lot of times have an additional level of stress that maybe the average person may not have. I pulled a little bit of data this morning. I just wanted to put out and just for framing this as we seg into this. Um, from the latest Gallup Healthways Wellbeing Index, 34% of entrepreneurs um, reported they were worried, and 45% of entrepreneurs said they were stressed. Um, okay. Just to give you an idea for a reference group, uh, that's anywhere between three to five points more than the mean or the average person on the street. So um, another kind of interesting quote I pulled up, uh, a lot of people equate entrepreneurship to riding a lion. How do you stay on without it biting you uh, or getting off and not get bitten at the same time? So um, just wanted to put that out there as we move into this. A um, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, Britt Bishop, who is with us this morning, she's going to be talking to us next week about uh, marketing and uh, marketing from a personal level and your own personal brand. Um, wanted to put it out there to everyone that's on the call this morning. Topics, you guys have been very forthcoming with topics for us to have going forward. Got another suggestion for um, monetizing our businesses online. We're going to work on putting something together for you on that in the next few weeks. Uh, but keep those ideas coming. Um, you, you guys are the it's the, you guys are the target audience, so let us know. Um, and yeah, we'll just move forward with that. So with that being said, I will hand it over to uh, Michael and let him take off and run with this. So. Um, Welcome, everyone. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Uh, you know, so my first question is, tell me how you know when you're under stress. So well, let's hear from you. I, I, I have answers. junk food. <laughs> so Matt I eats junk food. Oh, I can't sleep. This is Renee. Right, yeah. Renee can't sleep. I lose sleep. I can feel it in my body. Yeah, my, my jaw gets tight, and I end up with TMJ. Yeah. Uh huh. Definitely the jaw. Back stage. What was that last comment? Oh, neck pain. No, that was Mark. What, what oh, was definitely that? the jaw. Jaw, neck, the whole face. Yeah, back. Yep. My middle back tightens all up. <clears throat> yeah. Stomach pain. Lots of pain. I grind my teeth, and sometimes I don't do like just basic things like just putting a plate in the dishwasher, like I'll let it sit, you know, just for no reason. Incredible, incredible. Okay. Um, oh. I don't, can you hear me? Yes, Joe. Yeah. I'm having trouble. I'm gonna get off and come back on because I'm, I'm having trouble getting my uh, video to work. So, okay. um, but when <laughs> I start feeling stressed, I start biting my fingernail. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And Ka Kathy Norris, I'll, I'll, I'll be chat. back on as soon as I can get things functioning. Kathy Norris posted on the chat that my language and physiology change. So, so Kathy, tell us how that language and physiology changes. Uh, I will probably get my voice tone will change either higher or lower or more. Uh, aggressive or even meeker sometimes. I will also notice my breathing change. Um, it probably gets more shallow. Uh, other things in my physiology is I get stressed and I carry it in my shoulders. So those are those feeling things that I notice first, but I know at the same time it's happening in what my language patterns are, even my thought patterns. Fascinating, fascinating. Paul, you had mentioned that your body changes. Are you still there, Paul? Yes, I'm here. I, w I was going to get paper, but I didn't. Only made it halfway to the office. Oh. My oh. Name, so, <laughs> but I wanted to take notes because uh, this is awesome stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. When when I'm stressed, let's see. Um, I'll feel tightness in my chest at times, pain in the stomach. Um, one of the biggest areas for me is neck pain, shoulder, sh shoulder stress. Um, 
uh, I have an announcement we'll give later, but I have this amazing way for getting rid of pain in your body. Go ahead, Michael. If I can just jump in there real quick, uh, just a little side note to Paul's comment, uh, just to let everyone know, Evelyn's done a really good job. All these, uh, the videos from these are available on YouTube. I'll push that link out after this just as a convenience for you. So Perfect. stepping back on mute. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Going to offer you a different perspective here. That what you all have been talking about is actually distress rather than stress. Because we are under stress anytime we need to get something done. Uh, and, 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 and in fact, without stress, we don't do very much. Stress is actually the physical and psychological tension that gets us ready for action. So, so we need stress. But it's the distress that causes us problems. The distress occurs when we're holding on to that tension and not letting it go. When you need to do something and the tension builds up, once you do it, that tension dissipates. But in times like this where you, you know, there's not much to do about a coronavirus. There's not much to do about you can't go outside and meet with people. Then that, that energy that wants you to do something just stays in our bodies, in our minds, and begins to tighten up the muscles, tighten up our brains, and all of that stuff. Now, so then the question is, what do we need to do to beat the distress? Because that's really what you're under when you're talking about all that tension. So, just some four basic things. Eat well. I think somebody said that they turn to junk food when they're under stress. That was Matt. Yeah, yep. that is not good for you. It just is going to add to your stress. A couple people mentioned that their uh, sleep pattern has been broken. Who was that? Renee. Renee. Yeah. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. Find some way to get back to a healthy what what a of uh, sleeping. Joan, it looks like you were back with us at least to some degree. Say what? What did you say? What do I do to get back to? Yes. Yeah. What do I do to get back to normal sleeping? Mm -hmm. Um, so I just, I guess I reposition my thought process. My, my, uh, mantra in life is, um, I don't do anything that's going to cause me to not sleep well at night because sleep to me is so important. So I definitely, if I, if I don't get sleep, then I know that something is on my mind. So I know that the next day I have to change something. I have to take action, whether it be to change the situation, um, to reflect on the situation. Um, but that's when I know I have to take action to dig in and, and figure out how to solve the problem. There you go. The key word, take action, because that's what the tension wants us to do is to take action. And when we just sit around and just munchy, 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 you know, uh, that's not the kind of action that we need. Now, a big one is exercise because that that is action. Yep, quite. So, uh, what kind of exercise are you folks doing, uh, given this social distancing stuff? Um, well, I'm, go ahead. I was just going to say, my, my son and I, um, every day after work, we do uh, 40 minutes. So five of us, five minutes are on the treadmill, five minutes are a hit workout. And we do that alternating. We alternate. So the person that's doing the hit workout is on the treadmill for five minutes. And that person on the treadmill keeps count for the person that's doing the hit workout. And uh, we do that every day for 40 minutes. And it usually takes us about 50, 50 minutes. Um, but that's what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. How about you, Sean? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
uh, just walking around. Yeah, I feel working, so I'm I'm bouncing around quite a bit. Okay, so then you are working out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, if you have a job that is keeping you moving, that is exercise. Yeah. So, so absolutely. Somebody else. Well, I I so desperately miss the gym. Uh, I you know just I've been going to the gym for for well over a decade, and I can't go to the gym right now, and it is driving me nuts. Uh, every I find I, in place of that. So I find that every every couple of days, my body tells me that it had better do something. It had you know better do some kind of exercise. So I'll do I'll do some push ups. I'll do some crunches. Um, I do kind of my own yoga like routine of stretching. Um, yeah, stretching is real important for getting rid of pain and stress in the body. Real important. Cool. Absolutely. Cool. Now I I have a, a routine that I well I don't know I don't call it exactly routine because it depends on how I'm, I'm feeling and my body's feeling, but um, I I uh, go outside and walk. Daily, I, my goal is uh, 5,000 steps, and I usually exceed that. And I like to do what I call a walk and talk. So that's when I, a lot of times my daughter and I are doing that. We're each walking, you know, in our by our own homes and then talk on the phone. And if she's not available, I just, that's when I call a friend and I talk while I'm walking. And then I don't even notice that I'm walking so far. But I live on the eighth floor. And so I always, I don't want to get in the elevator if I can avoid it. So I always walk down the stairs. And then when I, I, I've been working towards being able to walk up the eight flights. That's and beautiful. I last night I made it to the sixth floor. Very so, uh, yeah, so I'm, and then I, I also, have yoga that I practice and stretches and uh, uh, sometimes qigong uh, that I don't do every day that and meditation which is exercising a different part of us sure sure Brett how about you um right now I'm doing different balancing things like balance board stuff and stretching um my ankle is feeling a little bit better so I think this weekend I'm gonna go for a skate see if I can get back to that. Uh, and my boyfriend, he's a hockey player. He bought himself some rollerblades, so we might be able to go skate together. So. Great. Anybody else? I've been trying to stay away from the news and play more music. So now I have the opportunity to dance like nobody's watching because nobody's around. So uh, <laughs> get to be free, try out some new moves, and um, get away from the news. Dancing is great exercise. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get that all ready for when this thing's over, okay? You want to get that, you know, polish up those steps, yeah? Lord knows I could use the practice. <laughs> all right. and for, for those of us that can't dance, me, uh, I started jump roping about a month or so ago. I used to do it back when I was – I used to box when I was in my 20s, um, and that's one of the big things you do. So I started, like, my goal is to get to about five or ten minutes where I can do it continuously in sets and – you don't have to go to the gym to Paul's point. It's something you can do in your garage or the house. So, yeah. I, in addition to some of those things, I love to ride my bike. So I will go for long, long bike rides. Um, in addition to, I do uh, workouts in the garage. And I also joined an outdoor um, boot camp that my husband is actually putting on because he is a personal trainer. And he got creative and... Uh, we're still uh, practicing social distancing and abiding by no more than 10 people and six feet. But uh, he's been able to transition that and he's making more money than when he was doing it at the, at the gym that he worked at. So that's cool. good. Wow. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Betty, how about you? Well, I, I walk and run uh, three miles per day. So that's why I was not on the call. So today is raining. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I didn't go today. So I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. Evelyn, what do you do? Uh, well, I, my usual walks, like Betty, I do to three to four miles and um, yeah, I, or I bike rides. Go- You're not going on the trail? Uh-oh, yeah, it's, um, on the trail, no, no, it's too much. Yeah, well, it's been very busy. Um, but I, I, you know, if anybody knows me, they know I really don't have television at all. I don't subscribe to it. So, um, oh, other than Netflix, so music is playing in my house all the time. So, me and the dog are typically uh, dancing when I'm moving to the house. So that's a good one for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Given this period where things are really different that tends to build up the distress more. So that means you need to exercise more, that you need to eat better, sleep better, exercise better. And if you talk about these things on a regular basis, think about these things on a regular basis, you are more likely to do it than not talking about these things. Because if we don't talk about it, we don't think about it. If we don't think about it, we tend not to do it. So if you really want to get your act together in terms of eating well, sleeping well, exercising well, it makes a big difference. Okay. Here's another stress secret that that, that when you're feeling the stress acutely, start taking deep breaths. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Try a few now. Deep breaths where, 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 where. Where you fully exhale and then fully inhale. You know, what do you do for your stress, man? Because I've not heard your voice in a while here. work you know. uh-huh. <laughs> so so is that becoming distressful absolutely uh-huh. <laughs> that's why i figured i could call him to and see what you're doing there uh-huh. you gotta set yourself some limits dino well if i didn't have everybody and their brother i feel like uh relying on me then uh you know, you come it. first. Well, I have to this point. Yes. Well, I'm being, I'm I'm being called. It's hero time. So <laughs> you can come first next week when he's done helping me. Yeah, I was gonna say when I'm done helping uh, Britt. So do you know? Really, yep. But the problem this is, is this is a stressful day. I'm gonna be on a call from nine o'clock today mm-hmm. until four o'clock this afternoon i will be on zoom calls all day long so yeah i'm a little stressed out yeah that's if you don't do something like what paul is talking to to you about or some of the things we're talking about here you won't be able to help those people and i get it i get it yeah to, so you know i mean i make time for myself um for sure that's tomorrow is uh Pretty much uh, after I've got a, I got a call in the morning at eight thirty, and when that's done, then you know I'll go do all the stuff that's kind of gotten shoved to the back burner. Um, so, which of those things that are my things? So, good for your stress. Uh, just probably getting out of the house. I mean, I, I don't since I've got since I had my I, a, a lot of it. I've learned how to take. I don't. I don't. Um, you know, I mean, my stress level is way, way less than what it was prior to September of 2016. And that's when I had my stroke. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I pushed, push, push before that. Um, you know, part of my recovery was learning to do less. Um, you know, and I'm probably the reason that I've got a lot of stress right now is just trying to get this stuff up and running, you know, for these commitments that we've made. Uh, I haven't worked at that level um, since before that. 
And so I'm sure I'm probably getting myself whipped back into that kind of a state uh, at this point. But uh, right. I see light at the end of the tunnel, so I'm feeling a little better. <laughs> Thanks for asking, though, Michael. Well, well, well my concern is you're setting yourself up for, uh, for another stroke. Right. And you do not need that. We don't. Uh, if I could jump in just with a thought, I mean, there is a season for everything. And sometimes the season is to be a warrior and, you know, to just push through and get it done. And if that's the season for you and you know that that's the season you're in and you have a limit to it, you said tomorrow right. is a day off. Well, there's right. a limit to it. It's today. So be a warrior and we're behind you. Okay. And then yep. take tomorrow off, dude. Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear that makes, that but but also... If, hey, if can, Trump, can you Trump guys wait? Trump. Can you guys all wait one minute? I gotta yes. pull my couch in here so that I can lay down while you guys are. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> today, please. <laughs> you can yeah. take five minutes. Take two minutes yep. between meetings. Two minutes. I already have it scheduled. So <laughs> do you need the two minutes? I'm here. You got I'm it? hearing you, but I, I got I got I got fifteen minutes scheduled right after this. Perfect. So. Okay. Perfect. So throughout the day, <coughs> take a break for just a minute. Yeah. You know, just get mentally get away for just a minute every hour. Right. Kathy, you were saying something. I was, uh, I could be totally off base here. And I heard a, a Dino say that tomorrow we have something at 830, but then he doesn't have scheduled calls the rest of the day. But I didn't hear him say, I heard him say he was going to catch up on projects he hadn't done. So that wasn't a plan to take the day off. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it, I mean, my projects are my personal projects. In other words, working on myself. I schedule everything that I do on my calendar. Everything. Because if you don't, then other things consume your time, right? Yeah. So. Right. Everything's got a place on my calendar and the, the, the problem has been because everything is just kind of, that's probably part of my stress as well is because all this other stuff has come in and, you know, it's kind of washed all of those other things that I had out there because there were deadlines that had to be met. So. And I want to, I want to say, do you know, um, I, <laughs> I've always put everything on my calendar too. I have it color coordinated, so I know what type of uh, activity it is and what's is coming right. up. Um, but um, I think that's one of the challenges I've been having right now when I said discombobulated earlier is that I, I can't seem to get, you know, my schedule in order or have the routines that I normally have because they're so broken right now. And yeah. everybody else is discombobulated. So I'm finding myself shoving things all over the place and not really getting anything done as efficiently. So that was one thing that I did, one act I took this week um, to help with my stress, actually. Uh, I set up a, a Zoom art class with the women that I do art with because we're all struggling with creativity right now and, um, and just uh, feeling very isolated. And everybody's super excited that's happening tomorrow. Um, oh, that's great. And I put on the calendar, I was like, we're doing this every Friday at 10 a.m. with a cup of coffee and our jammies and our paint. Let's go, you know. Um, and I think I need to start doing that with more things and get them consistent because it helps my stress level to come down to, to, to have a plan. And I've been terrible at that since this started. So thanks for that reminder of how important uh, that scheduling aspect is. That's a good point. Good point. Give you another suggestion. Talk to somebody uh, it, it, it could be your significant other, it could be a buddy, it doesn't matter. So you talk to somebody about what you're doing for your stress, right. at least every other day. Because otherwise you'll just fall back onto automatic and your automatic is discombobulated and all of that. And it just begins to slide. So, so Dino, talk to your lady about it. Talk yeah. to somebody on yeah. no, a regular basis so that you aren't counting on yourself to do what you need to do because we are generally not capable of counting on ourselves successfully very much. Right, right. 
All right. Super. Appreciate that. And the only reason we're having you back about this, Dino, is because we love you so much. I was going to say, where do I need to send a check? This is expensive (laughs) therapy. (laughs) (laughs) It's called making money online. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's next week's topic, right, Matt? (laughs) There you go. Okay. Uh, Something very important that helps with stress a lot. Do things that are fun for you. Do things that you enjoy. So let's talk about things that you enjoy doing that you've kind of put aside and you aren't really doing them the way you really want to be doing them. Things that you enjoy, things that are fun. Hi, I can. Kayaking. <clears throat> went out about two weeks ago. Uh, went for a nice kayak paddle down Burker Creek off Lake Tarpon. And it's just good to, A, get away from definitely social distancing, but to commune with nature and uh, get some exercise and get my body moving and change the scenery. And came back and I felt like a new man. So, Mark, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, so I tried. Once the head. weather clears, I'll be back out there again. So the weather's going to clear like tomorrow. Okay. Later today. <laughs> okay. It, you know, so, I mean, it, 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 it's that putting things off. And, and, and we live in this society that is focused on working hard and being productive. I want to offer for you the, the idea that having fun, do, doing things that you enjoy, is very, very productive. Yeah. So don't put having a good time off. How about you, Carl? Because we've not heard your voice in a while yet. Oh, well, it's lucky you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, it's the self-deprecation I, over here. Yeah. Self-deprecation. <laughs> I got all this... Uh, I have all this exercise equipment on my back porch. I got a treadmill. I got a rowing machine. I got a uh, stationary bike. I don't use it. I jump <laughs> off the handle, fly, you know, fly to conclusions. Uh, I don't I, I, I got to get back into it. I, for fun, I normally go to uh, state parks and, and hike around. I like that. I walk the dog. I guess that's about it. Um, but yeah, I, I need to, I know I'm bad. And that's why I'm on mute. Cause listen to all you guys, man. Wow, you're so perfect. You eat well, sleep well, and exercise. And like, I'm thinking about dropping out of this meeting. <laughs> uh, I have oh, oh, okay. be inspired rather than hey, that inspired doing rather doing than dropping me. out. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go to Brits meeting on the next one because this one's like, uh oh, that's another thing. I got a long list here that Michael's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I got to do this. Carl, stop. What are you going to do differently, man? I am, uh, I think I'm going to start, instead of looking at that equipment, I'm going to use it. So <laughs> uh, tar- Starting tonight. Carl, yeah. just, yeah. just pick, pick one, one piece. piece. Yeah, pick one yeah. piece of equipment. Yeah. And I was also just going to say, we have a massage therapist here in the group. And he would say, he would definitely say to me that um, keeping my body moving, especially if I'm sitting in a chair a lot, is going to help with pain management because I do have uh, you know, significant challenges with my very lower back. So you're in that chair and I know you're working your ass off right now on behalf of a lot of people. So I'm just going to remind you, even going down one floor, walking around and coming back up the stairs at your own office is going to make a big difference for your, uh, circulation and your lower back. Yeah. I I have a lot of pain. Pardon me? I, I, Go ahead, Kathy. No pain. Oh, no I was going to say, <laughs> okay. it, it, so. sounds like, it sounds like a lot of us need accountability in doing the things that are good for us, right? And yeah. I think that was Michael's, um, you know, point there was accountability. And my husband, as he is a personal trainer, he's gotten resourceful. He can hold people account that, accountable, take them through a social distancing workout, whether it's six feet away from you or more, or via Zoom. So there's you just, we got to think resourcefully instead of um, and lots of options instead of just uh, 
how can I do this my old way or this way? Because there's so many more options. So Carl, what are you going to do for fun? What do I do for fun? I am going to, I, I really enjoy bike riding. I have several bikes. I, uh, I love that. Uh, so I will use, uh, tonight I'm going to use my stationary bike um, and uh, put on some music and, and go for a ride in my mind. On have, the bike. You, <laughs> <laughs> you got a partner <laughs> who could remind you about these things? Do I have someone who could remind me about this? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the list is long and distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> So who? Who? Yeah, who? Me first, my son, and then my wife. Okay, so you need to ask them to remind you about doing these things. I'm writing this down. Or it'll just disappear again. You're right. It'll just disappear again. Can I, do you, Michael, do you mind if I ask a question real quick? Mm-hmm. I can, part of what Carl is talking about, I don't know if this is exactly what he's getting at or, or was talking about, but I know for myself, um, I, I know I'm supposed to exercise. I know I'm supposed to eat right. And Lord knows when my wife tells me, Hey buddy, why don't you go work out? I know that I already should be working out, but maybe, maybe something about that psychological mental process. When we get to the point of it, it's like a real affective thing, affective with an A where I know I should be doing it, but I'm not. And it's like, I don't know if it's like a level of I don't want to say depression, that's a big word, but it's like a place of, I mean, I think everybody on here knows that whatever age we are, you know, I can't exercise like I could when I was like maybe 20 or something like that. But I know, I always know that I need to be active. And the other complex thing that comes from that is I know when I exercise, I feel better. I know when I eat right, I feel better. Yet the whole enigmatic thing is why don't I do it? Why don't I do it? I mean, I'm personally, I'm, I'm, I'm in what I call, or my wife would say, I'm in the zone right now. I'm working out, but how, you know, you, you could look at me and I'll just put myself out there. You know, I fight with my weight. I've done it since I was a little kid. I'll get really, I'll drop weight. I'll gain weight. And it's just like zigzags like this. So that's like the big question of, I know, I I know to do the right thing. I understand what nutrition is. I understand what brings my stress down, but what what cognitive process will or whatever keeps me from doing it? I'll jump back on mute. Great question. But I, the answer is that we live the great bulk of our lives on automatic. And for the most part, it works just fine. I don't have to think about how I'm going to brush my teeth in the morning. I just do it. I drive my car, I walk on automatic. I don't need to think about how to take each step. Now, these automatic habits also get ingrained about things we shouldn't be doing, and they get ingrained about things we should not be doing. I I, I think I said the same thing twice. (laughs) Okay, so... No, I understood the difference in what you were okay. saying. You, I think yeah. you said a good thing. Right, yeah. So, so, so the trick is how do we get off of automatic? How do we become conscious when we need to? Now, you, 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 you don't need to be conscious about routine things, things that are working for you. Those are fine. But when things are not working, when you're in unusual situations, that's when we need to get conscious about, huh, am I just on automatic and is this working f- for me? Is this working for me is one of my key questions. With, 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 I work with my clients, I work with my students. Is what you're doing working for you? Is Is what you're doing getting you to the goals you have for yourself, such as staying alive and healthy. And often when we stop and think about it, the answer is no. 
And, 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 and as we've already been talking about, we know that we cannot be trusted by ourselves to do what we know we should be doing and what would be good for us. But yet we keep trying to do it by ourselves. Oh, you, it'll never work that way. So, so this is not just Matt. This is Carl, this is Dino, this is all of us. You need what Kathy was calling an accountability partner, where actually you hold each other accountable for doing the things that you need to do to achieve your goals. Now, think about this thing about goals. Often we don't have goals around being healthy or even know what being healthy would actually look like. Now, so if we don't even have a goal, we're really going to be on automatic about not doing what we need to do to be healthy. So, 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 Matt, if, if you and your family sat down and set some health goals for yourselves, and you talked about them at least every other day, Watch it start to work. Talking about it is the reminder that keeps it conscious for you. And talking about it with others who are there to support you, and you're there to support them too. I mean, uh, uh, these cannot be one-way streets. And, and, and watch you begin to not have to fight. Wait. Watch it become just, oh. I'm feeling good about the way I am. This is really working. I'm out riding. Absolutely. You have to include fun things, though. Now, the, the, well, one of the things that I knew that I should be doing but wasn't doing was flossing every morning. Uh, <laughs> but I floss every morning. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me say it say, say this way. What got me to floss was I gave myself one day off a week. So Sundays, I do not floss. Just giving myself that one break has, has, has had me flossing six days a week for at least 15 years now. But you got to give yourself a break. So don't set up a schedule that is going to be arduous, that you just, uh, I mean, that, that, that is going to be painful to, to, to do. Give yourself a break as well. We have to be conscious. We can consciously choose how we respond to external events. A lot of people have this, this notion that it's the coronavirus that is causing us stress. Coronavirus isn't causing us any stress. <laughs> it's how we are interpreting that virus and what it's doing. That's what is causing us stress. Being inside the house by ourselves is, is not inherently stressful. It's how we are managing that in our minds that is distressful. So uh, uh, again, begin to, to notice what your own responses are and are they working for you? And you gotta talk this stuff over with other people. We are not trustworthy to manage this stuff by ourselves. Now, we all have what I call our energy sponges. Energy sponges are those things that we do that just soak up lots of energy, lots of time, and don't produce anything. Give me some of your favorite energy sponges, things you do that are a waste of your time and energy. Give me one, somebody. Television. Television. Uh, who said that? 
Oh, Mark. Television. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, you know, um, is television fun for you? Uh, at times, yes. Well, then it is not an energy sponge. It, an energy sponge is totally unproductive. And, and I am very big on that fun and enjoyment are highly productive. Do some of you worry? Sure. That's an energy sponge. It takes up your time and energy, but doesn't produce for you a single thing. Have any of you complained about the past two months? Suddenly, everybody's silent. Isn't this fascinating? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm complainers. I complain. Uh, you know, and that's. I think that's a time waster because, you know, it, it doesn't do much. Yeah. So I, I have to say, you know, um, I don't complain too much, but when I do, it's usually when I'm completely stressed out about the situation. That's right. So you know, one of the de-stressors for me is to call my sister and kind of both of us mutually complain about all of our stuff so that we can be done with it, you know? Okay. Exactly. There's value in complaining. At there is. Okay. There is. As um, long as you find value in it, I'm okay with it. Right. But and on the flip side... Noticing that you're just complaining, 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 complaining. That, that is an energy spot. I would agree with you entirely. And as for the television one, like, that's the other thing is, you know, it's like, what are you watching on television? can make the difference about whether it's an energy sponge because, you know, I listen to my family and they're nonstop about what's going on politically. And, and I'm, t I keep telling them like, get rid of the television. It works for me. <laughs> I can read the little bits on the, you know, that I need to from my sources and don't need to listen to the rest of it because it, it will be an energy suck. Super. I, everything in moderation, I should say, because I mean, Facebook can be a time suck for people. And although it's enjoyable, it keeps keeps me from getting anything done. Um, go down the wormhole of swipe, 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 swipe. So Pro procrastination is a huge, huge energy sponge. Something I need to do. I'll do anything. I'll clean the house before doing what I need to do. That's when procrastination is a major, major energy sponge. Yes. So I'll admit, um, procrastination is a huge thing of mine. I'm either super in the zone and motivated or not at all. It kind of depends on where my brain is cycling. Um, but for an example, um, I'm also in a BNI group and I was told to make a list of names of business owners that we, um, of the word of, um, jobs that we don't have in the group to make like a list and see if people you can invite. And I had a week to do it. And those of you on Facebook know I'm on it a lot. And I didn't end up making that list until 5am the day it was due when I'm in networking groups and obviously no people. Like it, like it was just so stupid. I acknowledge it. I just, I need to work on that for sure. But that was my recent personal experience with that. Once you can begin to identify your major energy sponges, you can begin to notice that they are automatic. And once you are aware of them, you can begin to choose, oh, there goes my energy sponge. Am I going to stay with yeah. it for, for another two minutes or am I going to do something that is more useful? Do something more useful. Now, now, one of the things that you just reminded me of, Britt, is I used to find myself signing up for stuff that I knew I should do but really didn't want to do. And then I'd stress out about having to do them. <laughs> I stopped signing up for stuff that I don't like doing, <laughs> you know. Get somebody else to do that stuff. Because shoulds turn into distresses too easily. 
So, so manager should, it, it, is this a should for me? Is this something that, that I will really enjoy that I'll get something useful from it? Eh, no, not really. But then don't do it. Don't sign up for things that you really don't want to do. Michael, I heard a great um, thing about when we should. It's we're actually either shooting on ourselves or we're shooting on other people <laughs> with that play on word. And a great example that gave me a lot of clarity was um, uh, somebody, uh, let's say somebody's coming home from work before COVID and they come home and they put their briefcase down and sit down and uh, maybe the wife or whatever is standing at the kitchen sink and she's peeling potatoes and she starts ruminating like he should have came over here and gave me a kiss <laughs> and he didn't and she gets madder and madder and madder and um, she really was creating that stress in her mind because she had an expectation of what should happen and he didn't even know it and things like that. So that was a great example for me, but we do it to ourselves and we do it to other people all the time. And uh, you gave a great example of saying no to stuff. Amen, amen. You know, Michael, I love that you said that about um, giving yourself permission to not have to do something because I was one, I, I was like you, I would feel like I had to do everything. And I've been reading a book lately. Um, I was just, I just finished a book actually that talks about um, asking yourself, am I willing or am I unwilling? And you can use that in either, am I willing to exercise every day and lose weight? Or am I unwilling to be out of shape and um, overweight? Um, and that can go, you know, either way, the willing and, and unwilling. So I've been trying to ask myself that um, when I get into a, a situation where I do have to do something, am I willing or am I not willing? And if you're not willing, then it's okay to say, I'm just, I'm just not going to do that, which is so powerful. So thank you for bringing that up because it's really true because we really feel like we have to do things and we, we really don't. Many of us are on automatic about saying yes. When the answer often needs to be, yeah, that's a great idea, but no thank you. Mm. Or I can now get that six months from now. But the answer is no, I can't do it now. But let's talk about how you can get it done anyway. Which is something I enjoy doing. Yeah. Super. All right. I wanted to just um, mention something that mm -hmm. kind of had to do with that. Um, I've noticed that in certain, in conversation with people, like I was talking to a, a client and just, we were checking in to see how, you know, things are right now. And that person wanted to go in a direction in the conversation that was uh, it was a pit. It wasn't just a sponge, but you know, all talking about um, uh, conspiracy theories with all of this and stuff. And she got two sentences out, and I just stopped her and said, "I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going to go there in this conversation because all that kind of." discussion, whether it's about the political climate or the, the, the huge disaster that you can, you know, you, you can just grab onto, all that does, since there's nothing that we can do other than the part we play about staying home, all that does is put me and you and others into a distressed state. And I can actually feel my body and my immune system start to drain, my energy start to drain, and I get sick. And I, 
I get sick easily, so I've had to. I've spent a lot of years learning what helps and what mm. what exacerbates it. And so, when when somebody is trying to engage me in that way, um, or what's when I'm reading what's out there, I just I just shut it down and become try to become. Um, just in an uh, observing mode about myself and what it is that is doing to me and give myself permission to do something that is um, not going to put me in that state. Joan, you are talking about two very important things, things. You know, one is that a lot of us tend to to blame other people for our loss of energy, for our stress. Right. My well, my mother used to blame her second husband. And I would say to her, look, you know, he's not doing that to you. He's just doing what he does. It's how you are choosing to respond to him. You are in charge of that. Don't you have taken charge of what you do when you're with people that are doing things that are not good for you? That's so powerful. So thank you for that. The second piece is Joan is mindful of what her mind is saying to her. And when we are mindful of what our thoughts are, what our emotions are, we can even be, become mindful of what our beliefs are. And then we, we can notice, oh, is this working for me? I'm really feeling angry. Can I begin to notice the thought that I've got that, that I'm using to trigger my anger? And once I do that, I can begin to shift all of that. Suddenly, I'm in charge of me, rather than the external world is in charge of me. Our whole language system says, you made me angry. You, you made me sad. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. You know. What absolute nonsense is that? Our emotions belong to us, and we can manage them as long as we own them. But on automatic, we say that other people, external circumstances are co causing our emotions. No, we get to choose our own response. The world is doing whatever it's doing. Oh, it's raining outside. That that makes me sad. No, you make yourself sad when it's raining. Oh, it's raining outside. Oh, that's good for the grass. Oh, now I'm making myself happy. That, that's because I'm in charge of me, not the weather is not in charge of me. All right. I love that. I, Go on. Oh, I just wanted to say, um, I call that piloting. Um, learning how to pilot myself instead of going on autopilot. Yes. And um, just in so many ways in my life, that is probably one of those key things that's helped me to de-escalate things with other people is to be very mindful of my reactions along the way. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for that reminder. My pleasure. All right. Final piece. During this time, if each of us could find something useful to do for ourselves or for others when we are feeling distressed, that will eliminate a lot of that distress. Some of you are already doing that. And so I would like to hear from each of you. What are you doing to support yourself and or what are you doing to support others?
want to hear from everybody. If you don't have something, let's invent something. And Michael? Yes. This, this also brings up a question for me because I, I find myself, you know, I, I live by myself. And um, I'm not able to go and be with my daughter in person. And she's going through some very, very challenging things right now. And um, all at once. And my usual is to try to figure out what it is I could go and do to help, you know, which isn't always what she wants. So I also have to back off too. But um, I could have helped her with this painting, the walls, right? Couldn't. So I can't go there and do that. So um, it brings up two issues. One is the distress of not being able mm. to be there for people who maybe need me to be there. My brother's sick, things like that. Um, and then the, the other part is instead of just getting stuck in the distress of not being able to, to sit back and say, okay, what can I do that would actually maybe be a little helpful that could help remove some of the stress or at least from them or at least not cause more? So what did you come up with? Um, well, with my daughter, um, I just let her know that I was sad that I couldn't be there to help her with the painting that she had to do immediately. She's in the middle of this, having her kitchen remodeled. She hasn't had a kitchen for two and a half weeks during this. And um, so first I just let her know how I felt, but I made sure that, so she knew that I wished I could be there, but then just acknowledging what she's going through and the amount of stress and try to say something that might make her laugh a little, you know, or, or send a, a little uh, bit emoji or something to, to get her to just break the stress and breathe um, and realize that if I try to manage something in her life from here, it just causes more stress for her. And so, it more stress for you. Exactly. So backing <laughs> off and recognizing I can do this, I can't do that. So let's just try to keep things breathable. So that's been helpful, but it's really hard to sit here and know that my brother's really sick or my daughter's in a wherever she is or this friend is going through hell or whatever, and um, and not be able to be there for them. Um, and, and to just know that all I can do right now is take care of me. And sometimes I don't even want to do that. <laughs> Evelyn? I, I was going to say my, my best friend's mother uh, just passed away. And this was one of the moms in my life as I, when I was a teenager. It's, it's a hard space to be in. She can't attend a funeral. You know, uh, I can't go and support her in her grief. You know, so the question always becomes, you know, how can I support you right now? Now with someone who's in grief because they've lost somebody, I recognize that isn't always helpful because they don't know um, often what they need. So, you know, my response to her is a little different, but I do ask, you know, when someone I hear all this stuff going on, you know, what, what can I do to support you right now? Because I can't be there. You know, is my phone line open in 24 seven? Yes. You know, call me if you need to, you know, um, talk about it or, um, you know, like me reaching out to all the women who are stressed out. So let's do a zoom meeting. My sister's, you know, 46th birthday is Saturday and I've been stressing about that all week. I can't get up there to celebrate with her. And for me, that's very sad. Um, so I set up an international Zoom meeting with, you know, family in Europe, family in 
you know, all over the place and we have hopefully 15 people all buzzing in to surprise her, you know, just little things like that to get connected because you're right. We, we can't fix it. And as a mom, I always want to freaking fix things. I don't care if you're my kid or not. I'm fixing everybody. <laughs> you know, that's another human automatic condition is to fix things that we can't fix. Uh, who, who remembers the um, serenity prayer? So somebody say it out loud, please. God, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There you go. There you go. Mind you, it was because I went to a lot of Al-Anon. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay. But Evan, what you also did is you did something useful. You pulled together this international Zoom call. That's what I want to hear from everybody. What, what, useful, what useful thing can you do now when you are so limited that would be good for you and, or it, it could be good for somebody else? Kathy, you want to go next? Sure, because I, I know I have the pattern of I'd rather do something for other people than myself first. So I will procrastinate on my own stuff first because I like to do stuff for other people. And so I've made a decision to say, okay, go do something for somebody else. Then you have to go do something for yourself. Then go do something for somebody else and then go do something for your, somebody else. And so um, my recipient is Michael. Um, we had talked about a situation that he wants to do in his business and was kind of um, not coming up with a solution. And my one of the, we were talking and he was helping me because I was like, what's my USP, right? And so uh, one of my USPs is I'm very, uh, one of my strengths, according to Strength Finders, is I create ideas and options. And so I started creating ideas and options. And so now I've, I've already reached out to another group I'm in and I have five people that want to help Michael with his solution. <laughs> no out of pocket money up front for him. Not to say that they're, it's just a gift, yeah. but hey, it's a so, options and solutions. And so uh, I, that just makes me um, thrilled to be able to, to uh, bring him something. Right, and I did not know that she has been doing that. <laughs> so, so thank you, Kathy, right on. Who's next? What are you doing for yourself or doing for somebody else that is helping you manage your stress? Paul. So uh, actually to, to this point on Sunday, I'm doing a workshop uh, online, obviously, uh, on eliminating stress. Um, I, I might want to change the title to eliminating distress, but uh, yeah, uh, I like I like the distinction. Uh, and we'll be talking about techniques and tools and tricks you can use to remove stress once you see it happening in your body. And we'll be talking more about how to recognize stress in your body and in your mind, and then tools and techniques you can use to remove it from you. Cool. Um, so that you can be returned to that state of inner peace. Cool. Uh, and that'll be Sunday, and I'll type into the chat here in a moment uh, the link to go to to register for the event. No cost. Um, for me, <sighs> well, the one thing I definitely do every day is I walk down to the mailbox and get my mail. Okay. Um, so I get out of my little box here for, for that. I mean, I love living in this trailer. I really do. But right now it's really getting too small. Um, and so I'll walk down and get the mail. Sunday, I went to the park. Parks are still open. Parks are considered essential. Thank God. And, um, I tell you what, parks are becoming the meeting place as well right now. So, you know, if you want to meet people, you want to be around other people, you know, I love it. Go to the park. Uh, food shopping. I understand some of the elderly are going food shopping just to get out of their homes. Uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. 
Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Cool, cool, cool. So, Paul, who would you like to hear from next? So that we, we can keep this thing moving here. Next. Um, Dino, what are you doing to make yourself happy and, and stay happy and calm and de-stressed? You were unmuted. <laughs> oh, wow, we can't hear you. You know, cannot hear you. I don't know why. Oh, because I had the uh, microphone was turned off. Sorry about that. I am happy because I'm doing what I love to do, help others. So, that uh, so you know, that part of it, I just, it's just, it's gotten overwhelming. I mean, everybody needs help. So, you got, I got, I got probably more people than I can. So, um, like I said, I, it just been everything came at once. I think this week has just been to this before this week, it wasn't a problem. I was taking time, you know, when the end of the day came and the news came on or whatever, you know, it was like, okay, shut everything off. And, you know, we, you know, Pam and I put dinner together and, you know, spent time together and watch TV and that sort of thing. I, I know I got to get up and get out a little bit more, uh, probably and, and do some exercise and that sort of thing. But, uh, so can you at least put some limit on how many people you can help? Uh, I don't, I don't think I can now, not with what we've signed up for. <laughs> well, but the truth is you um, could. Huh? I hear that you don't want to put up, put a limit on it, but you can put put a limit on it. Uh, that you do have some choices here. Well, sure, if I want to cancel contracts that I've signed with people, then I guess I could do that. So. No, it, it, it's something that you may want to think about. Think about, right. Yeah. Could I interject here? Because, Dino, I love that you're so committed to helping your clients. But it sounds to me like you might have a challenge with asking for help. Oh, no, we've got help. That isn't an issue. I've got all of that lined up. It's, it's the front end of anything. So how many people are execution experts out there? <laughs> yeah, I didn't no think more. I would say it. So that's why. Well, are we talking about and, killing people? And, no, no. <laughs> okay, implementation experts. Let's put it that way. Who, oh, I can't who help you Implementation with that one. Okay. expert. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so, Because so, most people say, oh, let's do this. But they don't understand, you know, the, uh, you know, I want to do this, but that's that's the iceberg, and nobody understands all the other stuff that comes underneath. I understand the all the other stuff underneath, and so I know what I'm getting into on the front end. I think what 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 becomes a problem is I try to do the best job that I can in communicating to people of what it what's going to be required in order to to have and to do what it is that they want. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times other people just don't understand that. And as a result of that, it was like, well, we just wanted to do this. And it's like, right, in order to do that, there's 20 things that you have to do before you can do that. Okay. And, but you're unwilling to see that other 20 things. And so, you know, and, and that's, that's a job, but that's, that's my specialty is really kind of doing that. So. I, I have a big challenge on implementation as well because I'm a idea type person and stuff like that. And um, I have to ask for help to do the implementation. Um, and then what you just said brought back a flashback when I had my financial planning practice. I kept, my husband came on board with me to work for a while and I was horrible at, um, explaining to him what I needed to have help on, but I had to realize I didn't train him properly. It wasn't him not following my directions because, um, so a trick is, hey, if you need somebody and if it's online, photocopy it or, or screencastify it 
And that way they can watch the video and know what to do, especially if it's on a computer. Great. Britt, how about you? What are you doing for, for yourself to manage your stress? Or what are you doing for others that will help you manage your stress? Um, well, so some people might think it's a bad habit, but I do smoke um, hookah. And, like, I bought myself a new one because they're cute. And I bought, like, an LED light for underneath it so that way it changes color. I know that sounds, like, so stupid and, you know, people are like, oh, nicotine's going to kill you. And, I mean, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. But just the fact that it's going to be changing colors and stuff is enough to make me happy. I've honestly been pretty happy because I'm trying to, you know, just de-stress the whole time I've been going through this because I don't want to, you know, focus on what's going wrong and just focus on, like, what's going right or what can happen. So... Well, well, but you were also telling me about what you're doing for for your hairdresser group. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been working with Dino, and he has been amazing. And he and Jennifer have set up a webinar series um, specifically for hairstylists, and it's exclusive to the group I um, created. And I feel like I'm genuinely, or we are genuinely helping people who need it. Um, I've had different people like message me like, Hey, thanks. I'm going to look into this now. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know if anybody's called you guys yet, Dino, but I keep telling them, I was like, talk to them, not me. (laughs) I was like, I was like, I know the basics. I can, you know, I can send you their, you know, links and go to their page. Um, but I feel like we are making a difference in helping people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so rather than be the hairdresser who cannot dress hair, you're out there making something happen for hairdressers. Yeah, that's that's marvelous. Thank you. Uh, it, it, uh, it it fascinates me that that's not that was not your first thought in in in, in answer to my question. I that's fun. I know. Like once you mentioned, I'm like, oh yeah, duh. Like <laughs> it's just. I guess I just didn't even think about it because I felt like it just even though it is out of the ordinary that we're doing this, it's a new thing for me. It just feels like, yeah, I'm here to help hairstylists. This is what I'm here for. So it kind of just didn't even occur to me for a moment. That's because you keep beating yourself up about the hookah, Britt. Don't beat yourself up. It's that time of, you know, my wife is kind of the same way. She, she had a problem with, uh, with her triglycerides or whatever, but I understand that, you know, a comfort for her is, you know, her chocolates and her sweets. She doesn't overdo it, but she's got to have that one a day at and least here. after dinner or whatever it yep. is. And she's on the front line. I mean, she works in a walk-in clinic. So it's like, look, I, you know, but you're going to judge me. I'm not going to judge you. If that's what you need, then right. that's what you need. Okay. I'm not going to. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's all those truth commercials and stuff, you know, and yeah. people are like, it's oh, that's a nasty give happen. yourself a break. Yeah. Really? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not what you need, it's what you enjoy. Yeah. Right. Good point, It's not Paul. like I do it all the time. It's not like, I don't know, I see it's different than cigarettes. It's not like I'm always out there doing it. It's like, it used to be like once a week. No, it's once a day because I'm home by myself. But right. like. Super. Yeah. How about you, Evelyn? Muted, sweetie. I, I think I kind of talked uh, a little bit of just about what I'm doing to try to connect with with others and, okay. and all of that and by the way i have to leave for another zoom business meeting at 10 30 so um i'll be on here a little bit more but i wanted to say this was awesome i love you guys i'm so glad that we are yeah. doing this every week the consistency of this has been really important betty how about you what are you doing for, for oh i for your... i do a lot of things Actually, every saturday i have an international zoom meeting with my family so we have a drink and we talk about what they've done the week. And it's a lot of fun. And I do have different goals. I'm preparing myself after the virus, when everything goes back, where we can go back to not normal, but out. And I do a lot of coaching for uh, investors. So I made up a booklet, so I sent to a lot of clients. So I'm keeping busy. And on top of it, I go every morning running. So 
That's go. good. Yeah, I have to keep busy. I don't have any choice. So this is my life. <laughs> well, you do have a choice, but you've made an excellent yeah. choice to keep busy. And I, I we keep uh, busy and healthy. I have my son, my daughter-in-law, and my grandson. He's two years old. So we had his birthday here. And it was fun. So, yeah, yeah. Well, so, well. That's okay. Yeah. Super. How about you, Mark? Um, been reaching out to friends, trying to keep laughter alive. Yeah. Uh, we, we always trade jokes back and forth. And my family's pretty witty, and we, we try to keep that on the up. And um, that, that's been helping considerably. If I can't laugh once a day, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> laughter is the best medicine. Huh? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Sean and Renee. You go Kick first. it off, baby. No, you go ahead. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we're, as far as other people, uh, like I say, we're still essential. Um, the business side, man, we do a lot of medical tubing um, and things like that with proprietary materials. So we do things that are directly going to COVID research and also the other support uh, high-risk people that need extra help right now. Um so really for other people, I think it's just kind of with my staff, mm -hmm. uh, they're going through a lot of stress, you know, with everything that's going on um, and then having to work on top of it and having the stresses of, of what we do, uh, just trying to stay positive and trying to keep everybody in a good, good spot. Um, and I mean, quite frankly, we're getting paychecks. So yeah, it, it's a little rough and it can be scary, but you know, we're not as impacted as some others are. So just trying to keep that positivity going. Um, and trying to keep everyone around me happy and like uh, like Mark said, but, you know, laughing <laughs> in a good spot. So good job. yeah. For me, I've been really I've I've learned a lot about myself um, in the last couple months. So I've been really trying to focus on living with intention. And um, so I've set up a, a schedule every day um, to keep me living with intention. So that's what I've been doing for myself. And then for my son, um, I've been trying to find, because he's home, he's affected, he's 15 years old. And um, I think he misses his friends, you know, with being away from school. So I've been trying to find like different fun things to do with him. Like last week, we did cuisine around the world. So he would cook, you know, mm -hmm. we, we made the the um menu together and um, we've been working out together and um last night he attended a, a conference that mark cuban was doing on um yeah. artificial intelligence and so i've been trying to find things to keep him um you know excited about being stuck home out with me <laughs> yes. so, so after meeting your son her son is the sweetest person by the way he yeah. is just <laughs> genuinely gold he should be doing like webinars, like, like, or something like he is just so like positive and like, he tries to find solutions for people. I think if he had like, you know, like a ask Sam <laughs> thing, I think people would get into that. Maybe you can help him with that. Yeah. Really, yeah. truly. Cause that would be something. I love your videos that you are doing. They, I like look for them every day. They just, Aww. I, I watch them. The gynecologist one was just, <laughs> I died. It was just so good. So Thank that's like, you. and that's what I love about, um, you know, there's so much negativity, but Britt, you're outputting positivity out on Facebook. And that's what I look for. Same thing with Evelyn. You know, I love to see your pictures and I love, like, I love people who are putting things out to make a difference for people, you know, to be positive to, um, I get value. I love people who are using this time to give value to others. Yeah. So I love it. Thank you. Hey, Matt, how about you? Um, as far as what I'm doing, just trying to think about with other people, I'm, I've said this before, I'm kind of an introvert by nature. I'm pretty good with a stack of books, my dog and sitting outside. But um, I, I have to think in this time, I know there's a lot of extroverts that really, you know, miss that mingling up of people, which I enjoy. But I know that like my mom, for example, complete opposite of me, she's very much an extrovert and just really is that social butterfly. So what I've as far as 
what I've been doing is just people that I've know that I know and I've known. I just just call up and just out of the blue and just really call in with the intention, not really talk about me, but just listen. Um, Cause that, you know, we're, as a general rule, wherever you fall on that spectrum, we, as humans, we're, we're gregarious. We want to be around people to some degree. So um, that's just a little part that, that I've done. Cool. Carl? Uh, probably like Matt. I am like super introverted. It's, uh, it's hard. But what I do for myself is I will reach out, uh, call some friends, like Mark said, you know, sh- share some laughs, uh, other practitioners. Uh, for grins and giggles, you know, call a client, tell them they owe fifty six thousand dollars in taxes. No, I don't. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, fun for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I, I just reach out and talk to people. I haven't talked to people. We're all kind of you know being isolated, and it's tough to to, to do that. But I know we're on the same boat. But it's just kind of good to hear uh, friendly voices, and they'll call me. Uh, for other people. Um, I volunteer uh, with some other nonprofits and uh, I got one that because of this group, I'm a little bit better with Zoom. Uh, my wife is also a teacher. She's having to do uh, Zoom for college classes. And uh, so I got these old dinosaurs onto Zoom and they I dragged them kicking and screaming into the future. And we had uh, we've had a couple Zoom meetings and they have loved it. They have said like, oh, my gosh, you know. Where was this? And uh, it's like, how, why didn't you share this before? And like, well, it's a secret. I can only share part of the future with a little bit of you, just a, a little piece at a time. And uh, so we, we're going to do another one Sunday night. And so we're going to have kind of a, a, a group where we're going to do some resources for uh, people that are going through hard times that they can kind of find, uh, we'll put it out there, that where to get unemployment, where to get the grant money for the PPP loans. Um, you know what, and, and so we're in con- contact with our, our congressmen, uh, our state and local representatives. So we just kind of have one area where it's uh, people, residents can go to, to to do this. And so to do this, we need a committee. We're going to use Zoom, and we're going to you know embrace the future and boldly go where dinosaurs haven't gone before. So we'll see what happens. Cool. We're done. Hey, if I can just jump in, I think we should have a session where we just call it Ask Carl, and we ask Carl anything. I just want to hear his response. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> well, Carl, can, we get a, can we get a vote? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> can, can I ask about something, though? Because Danny's on, right? Or is he not on anymore? Danny's on. Oh, I'm on. Danny's on. Yeah. How are you doing? Because a couple weeks ago we had a, there was a, um, Kathy did her, um, and I I just thought of this, Kathy did her presentation uh, when we were still at the chamber. And um, you had shared with all of us about your driving, and I don't know how much driving you have done, but you asked us to check in with you and see how the driving was going. So I haven't talked to you. I know um, just before this, we were going to try to get together for dinner. So how is, are things going with your driving? Have you been doing any driving? Uh, not a whole lot. No. I'm quarantined, but uh, doing okay. I actually took the advice, and it is our, it's helping. Now, not driving as much is also helping as well, uh, the stress level down. But uh, when I have been driving, no, it's been good. So thanks for asking. Good. Yeah, I was thinking of you lately and wondering how th- that was going, so I just wanted to ask. Well, thank you. I took the advice of the group, uh, did some, uh, like, my grandson's pictures and stuff like that, and so it's it's all, it's better, yes. Good. So, Danny, what are you doing for your stress? Uh, drinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Lemonade? <laughs> or electric okay. lemonade? Actually, uh, um, uh, what I'm doing with my stress is I, I'm, I'm, I'm a composer. I'm a musician, and I am just creating music and, and, and uh, writing a lot of music, and that has really been good for me. Marvelous. All right. Folks, I'm done. I turn it back over to Matt. 
Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Just want to thank you all for um, being with us today. Uh, again, like we said, any ideas? You guys have had great ideas so far. Next week, uh, Britt's going to take us a walk down um, doing our own personal brand. So um, we really look forward to that. So you guys stay safe out there. Um, I put a link on our page to the YouTube um, that came up earlier. I've already put that up there. So if you want to have a look at that, um, again, we're open for feedback or anything. So uh, you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you later.